Hello, everybody. All right, I, I, first off, I want to say that I am extremely happy to be here. Um, <laughs> uh, it's really an honor to, to, to be up here on the stage and speaking to you guys. Um, my name is Mark Rust, and I like to think of myself as a disruptive motivator because uh, somehow I'm always eager to take the next step. Um, today, I want to speak to you about acts of happiness and doing good as a motivator to change the world. Um, I asked the question, do we confuse comfort with happiness? And I want to look a little bit into what are the acts of, that kind of bring us a little bit out of our comfort zone and ultimately make us a little bit more happy. I grew up in Paris, France. Uh, at the age of eight, after a divorce, I, I moved to France with, with my mother. Um, I found myself all of a sudden in a new culture with a new language to learn with, um, and I, I felt very uncomfortable at first, um, and I felt lost. I became very observant of my surroundings. And ultimately, this teach taught me to look at the world in a different way and maybe see opportunities where other people didn't see opportunities and constantly have a different view of the world, uh, depending on the opposite culture I was in. Um, this also allowed me to see opportunities where other people didn't see them, and it motivated me. Happiness is about sharing ideas, and I'd like to illustrate this to you in the way that I proposed to my wife. This uh, obviously makes me extremely happy. Um, we met at work. We worked on the 21st floor of, a, of an office building in downtown Boston. And actually, we, we worked together for three years before I had enough courage to have a conversation with her that lasted more than two and a half minutes, and that was not about work. But um, once we got to know each other, um, I used to walk her to her bus from work every night. And uh, on those walks, we used to stop at a, a bench um, on Boston's waterfront. And it's on this bench that we got to know each other a little bit more. And it's on that bench that I told her that as, as kids in, in Paris, we, we used to do stencils street. She thought this was fantastic because she's an artist herself. I'm not saying that she endorses graffiti or I do either, but we were kids and it's what we did. Um, but I, I thought to myself, you know, what better way to court her than to do a stencil of her name? And so I did a stencil of her name and I quickly sent her off on a treasure hunt through Boston that led to this bench that we sit, sit at and, and talk. Um, we started referring to this bench as our secret spot. Um, so fast forward nine months later, um, after going to dinner, my future wife suggested that we go down to the secret spot. My plan worked out perfectly when not only did she go to the secret spot to look at her stencil, as she did, uh, and like to do every time, but also she found another stencil right there for her and everybody else to see that said, will you marry me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, this is obviously a very, very magical moment for us. The stencil is still there. If you'd like to go visit, I can tell you where it is in Boston. Um, but, you know, I can't help but think that a total stranger would come up to this thing and be like, oh my gosh, somebody proposed to somebody right here, you know? So I, I can't imagine that that wouldn't make somebody's day better and make them happier. Um, so obviously my point is that when ideas spread, others benefit. And I want to talk to you about a project that I worked on that illustrates that. Um, again, something about my wife. While looking for baby toys online, um, she came across this rather unusual post on, on, on Craigslist. And it was two roommates had found $25 in the street. And rather than spending the money on, let's say, beer or going shopping with the money, they decided that they would give the money to the first person that had a good idea. And I thought this was really noble. So I uh, thought about it for a few days, and while lying in bed one night, it dawned on me that I could turn this into a project. First off, I defined a good idea as an idea for the greater good, an idea that benefits your community, benefits others. Um, and then, so, so imagine this. Imagine a website where anybody could go and submit an idea then users of that website can go to the site and vote on the ideas that they like. They also have the option to make a donation to the, player, to the website. And say after a month, the best ideas get funded. 
I called the project Enchangement.com. And the reason why I wanted to do this project was, first off, I wanted to, it made me happy to build a platform that enabled other people to promote their ideas. I also wanted to learn how to start a company. I did that and I called it the Think Good League. I also wanted to learn how to engage with like-minded people. I met Mario this way. I got involved with the Happy Post this project this way. Um, and I also wanted to learn how to build a complex platform. I really had no idea how to do a voting platform online. But I, I just wanted to go for it, understand it, and figure it out. And then finally, I have to admit that one of the main reasons is that I just wanted to go for it. I felt that I had a good idea, and I wanted to put my foot down, and I wanted to just try it out. And I'm sure that everybody in this audience, all of you have good ideas, or have had good ideas. And when you have a good idea, you can do two things. Either you can opt in, or you can opt out. When you opt in, you can succeed, you can fail miserably, but when you opt out, you'll never know. And that's just a situation that I've personally been in before, and where I've had good ideas, I, you know, million dollar ideas or whatever you want to call it, but I didn't do anything about it. And I felt that I should just go for it. Uh, and, 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 you know, thinking about this, to have tried and failed is so, more, so much more noble than to have not tried at all. I doubt that anybody is going to be lying there at the end of their life thinking, you know what? I'm so glad I did not try that out somewhere down. <laughs> so, sometimes I believe, in I, I believe in going full throttle on things. And one, one story that happened to me that I think about a lot is when I was in college, I um, went to school full time. I worked my way through school entirely on my own. And at one point it came to my attention that I did not have enough money to go to school next semester. And the financial aid director, came up to me and said, listen, Mark, I suggest you take a semester off from college because you don't have enough money to go next semester. Take a semester off, save some money, and just come back the next semester. For me, this wasn't an option because all the money I made went to rent and food. So I, I, I just couldn't do that, and I had to figure out a situation, a, a solution. Later that day, I found out that the president of the university had an open office hour, and so I quickly found myself in his office in the chair right across from him. We had a great conversation. I told him about my situation, and the next day I found out that I was awarded a trustee scholarship for the amount of money that was, that was missing. This did put me in a very uncomfortable situation. I, you know, walking into the president, president, president's office was not easy to do, but, it, but it's something that bettered my life. I look back on this, and of course I don't regret it. Oh, I thought this thing ran out of batteries. Okay. Um, so, this is Enchangement.com, the website that I built, and once we, once we built it, it the, the, the initial reception was really great. People got very, very excited about it. I had the chance to meet some fantastic people at the Oktoberfest in, in Harvard Square, where we promoted it. I met with hundreds of people who told me about their stories of paying it forward, doing good for their community. They saw that a, a website like this could have value. And so, when, when looking at the traffic and how people went to the website, I do have to admit that few people went to the website and few people submitted ideas. And this, this, this was somewhat of a deception and, and, and it really got me thinking about human nature and how we look at happiness. And this is why I asked the question, do we confuse comfort with happiness? And what does it take for us to kind of get out of our comfortable zone and do something and kind of get used to doing something that's uncomfortable that's going to make us happy. How do we get used to building on ideas that we have or have an idea and build momentum behind that idea? So what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to do a little experiment with all of you guys. I'm going to ask everybody to stand up, please. Um, if there's anybody next to you who needs some help, please pull them up. All right. Thank you. So, if any of you in the past year, oh, people are still standing up. If any of you in the past year have planted a tree that is not in your garden, please sit down.
if you planted a tree in the past year, please sit down, and not, not in your garden. If in the past three months, any of you have gone up to a total, complete stranger and told them that they had some food in their teeth or some toilet paper on their shoe, please sit down. A few people, all right. Um, if in the past six months, while going out to lunch, you, had, you, you got a plastic bottle and you felt compelled to take that plastic bottle, put it in your bag, bring it all the way home just to make sure it was recycled correctly, please sit down. <laughs> paid for the person behind you at the drive-thru, please sit down. If you've ever paid somebody's parking meter in the past year, 25 cents, so that person wouldn't get a $30 ticket, please sit down. If you've ever been to the Gap in the past month and you felt compelled to pick up some clothing that was on the, on the floor, put it back on the rack, even though you don't work for the Gap and you weren't paid for the, for the Gap to do, by the Gap to do so, please sit down. If you have picked up a glove off the street in the past winter and put it in a place so somebody could notice it, please sit down. If you've ever smiled at someone in the past month that looked like they needed it, please sit down. <laughs> by a deep desire to do good. We, and, and these are not just ideas, these are actions. And I think that when you have an action, and when you're, and you, you should think about how can I turn my idea that I have into an action. When you leave today, I want you to think about your ideas and how you can put them into momentum. And if you don't have an idea, try to do small acts of kindness that will make you more receptive to those ideas. I think that the act of doing small ideas plus small ideas plus small ideas is going to get people used to doing bigger ideas. <laughs> See, this thing does need, it need batteries. This is a, a chart I put together. It's the happiness plus, happiness plus action flow chart that kind of illustrates what I've been talking about today. But I think that there is empowerment in doing small acts of kindness. And that empowerment has a repercussion. I might pick up some trash in the street that is some trash that isn't mine in the street, and it makes my street look cleaner. Of course it makes me feel better. But maybe somebody else sees, sees me do that. And maybe it makes their, their day better. And maybe an old lady comes out and sees that the, the street is finally clean, and, and, and her attitude is going to have a repercussion on somebody else. And that goes times infinity. So, when, when you want to, when you have a good idea and you want to do good, I believe that you should, should keep trying. I'm persuaded that progress is a law of life and that we need to get to work. I also think that it is a misconception to believe that you need to succeed in every single project that you start. However, it's important to listen to the right voice. And I know that everybody knows what I'm talking about. When you have a good idea, there's always that internal voice and external voices that say, no, nah, don't do it. It's not worth it. You shouldn't do it. You should focus on the good, on, on, on the right voices. I work in business strategy, and often in meetings I'll say, okay, don't tell me how we can't. Don't give me all the reasons why we can't do this project, but let's try to work together and find the reasons how we can do this project. Here's a quote I want to leave you with today, and it, it's by Harry Bertolia. It's, the urge for good design is the same as the urge to go on living. In this quote, what I really like to do is I like to replace the word good design with something else. The urge for a better life is the same as the urge to go on living. The urge for happiness is the same as the, as the urge to go on living. Because somehow, somewhere, there's always a better way of doing things. Thank you.